Well, on to our top story today. A police operation is underway after the French Coast Guard confirmed that at least five people have died during an attempt to cross the channel. And the irony of this, the tragedy is, of course, this comes just after Sunak says nothing will stand in his way. Last night, the Rwanda bill was passed in Parliament and it seems this boat literally got into trouble a matter of hours after that. Well, we're now joined by former Labour adviser Mike Buckley, as well as political adviser and commentator Leon Emerali. Mike, um, how do you... Th I mean, the first and foremost, this is an absolute tragedy. Sadly, it's the latest in a string of tragedies that we've seen in terms of the Channel Crossing. We know that Rishi Sunak was celebrating the fact that the Rwanda bill has been passed. This tragic news to come so soon after that, it's really going to hit home for people the reality of how important it is that these channel crossings are stopped. But is it really the most effective way in which we can stop them? We all want the channel crossing, stop, crossing stops and this tragedy today just highlights how important that is. And I would be celebrating today if I thought for a minute that the Rwanda bill was going to do anything to stop it, but it isn't. And in a way, I mean, this tragedy is, is, is commentary on that because this isn't the first time people have died in the channel. The people who choose to get in those boats, they know other people have died. They know the risk that they're taking. They're willing to take the risk because they believe that it's worth it to get to the UK where many of them have family members or they have cultural ties, they can speak English or maybe they've served with our forces overseas or, you know, there's some desperate reason for them to want to come here. They're willing to risk their lives and there's a very real risk of that. There was an infinitesimal risk of them being sent to Rwanda. Rwanda said it's going to take 350 people. We've got a backlog of about 180,000 asylum seekers. The vast, vast, vast majority of them are not going to go to Rwanda. So they're thinking, I'm going to risk my life in a boat, but I'm not too worried about being sent to Rwanda because there's an infinitesimal chance of it happening. As a result, it's not going to be deter the deterrent that Rajiv Sunak thinks it is. Uh, and Mike, I think we've all got really strong feelings about Rwanda. Bring in Leon. I mean, the thing that I find most appalling, and I, I'm with Mike, we've got 180,000 now, is it? Why we can't... I mean, honestly, I bore myself. Why we cannot process this. Why we can The passport office, six, two years ago, you can get a passport for six months. Now you can get one in three weeks. I don't believe we can't process it. Mm. What I find out this morning, which sends me into to raptures of anger at six, six o'clock, is that not only the tens of millions of quid we spent on accommodation in Rwanda has been sold by their government already because they didn't think it was going to happen. That's a waste of money. And then for Sunak to handpick 200 people, and 200's nothing, but I understand for him it's symbol, it, they've got to be in detention centres. You can't just pick them up from anywhere and nobody knows where these people are. So how are they going to... They can write to them and say, would you come to a detention centre? Of course they're not going to. No. Leon, we are a laughing stop, man. On the back of that tragedy, I'm with Mike, I, I'm with Nick on this, but really, it strikes me as such a poor attempt at dealing with something that people want an answer to. They really do. Yeah, I mean, I've not been a fan of the Rwanda policy ever since the beginning here. I think it's too costly. I don't think it's particularly practical and I don't necessarily think it is going to be that deterrent we want it to be. However, the tragedy in the, in the channel this morning or yesterday, whenever it took place, tells us that something has to be done because lives are being lost. People are Absolutely. risking their lives and people are dying as a result of it. So I think that the Rwanda policy, if it was going to work then great that the government is doing something about this and is actually, you know, able to have a plan. I think that's where the difference between the Conservatives and Labour lies. Labour said they're going to strengthen the borders. Great. But exactly how? I think that's where the difference is between the Conservatives and Labour. But something has to be done because these tragedies, these lives will continue to be lost and it isn't right. No. But this crossing was made after the bill was passed. Exactly. And that tells us everything, Nicola. Just because this legislation has passed doesn't mean that this is a silver bullet that is going to stop boat crossings, as Rishi Sunak says that it will. It isn't going to happen that way, because it isn't... Who on earth advised him to say I'm going to stop the boats? The most ludicrous... I mean, that'll, that'll be like Ed Miliband's stone, won't it? Oh, it's, uh, it's appalling, isn't but it? But, Mikey, let, yeah. let me ask you, because it is important. The Labour Party is so far ahead in the polls. We've talked about how, you know, bar a massive slip-up, they will probably form the next government. We'll talk about Rayner in a minute. Trust me, I will be asking you about that. But mm. tell us exactly what Labour will do differently, because... I don't doubt it's easy from the, the sidelines, and the Tories have done it plenty of time when Labour's in power. Mm. In 12 months' time, if Labour are elected, how are they going to stop the boats? They will want to stop the boats. They how? will cancel the Rwanda policy, partly because it's a waste of money, partly because it won't work. 
the only way to do it, I mean, I, I don't know, I don't know how far Labour is going to go on this, but they, but I'm sure they will take steps to stop the votes. The only way to do it is to have safe and legal routes where people can apply for asylum, come to the UK, and you need cooperation with Europe. We have some cooperation with Europe. We need more cooperation with Europe. And actually, one of the things Rishi Sunak has done, he put a returns agreement in place with with Albania. That stops Albanians coming. So why don't they? Do, why hasn't the last two years of his else. premiership when he wanted to turn? I mean, I said this to Nick earlier. Mm. When when Rishi Sunak stands up now and goes, oh, you know, I've been blocked. He came in. He stuck the knife between Boris Johnson's shoulder, bla shoulder blades and he came in and he said, I'm going to change things, right? Mm -hmm. He could have said, I don't agree with Rwanda, I'm going to spend my time creating, and I really want to ask you this, Leon, I'm going to create those agreements with ten other countries that I've made with Albania. That would have sorted out the problem a lot quicker, but he didn't. He's gone with this and now he's telling us that, that you know, everybody's trying to prevent it. I, I, don't, I don't understand why he tied himself to this. I don't. Well, this is quite a bizarre situation for Rishi Sunak because Rwanda was not his policy. He didn't even necessarily Did agree you? with it in the early stages when Boris Johnson announced it. So he could have been in a position to ditch it. The problem is internal politics within the Conservative Party, as ever, meant that it would have been impossible for him to ditch Rwanda because that was the sort of bastion... Well, let's be honest, it would have been impossible for him to votes. ditch Rwanda and get the right-wing support to get the job. Exactly that. Exactly that. And I wow. think that's the problem. It's internal Conservative politics that have led to this fairly poorly thought-out policy, very expensive policy, mm. that might not actually work. I agree with Mike entirely. We need international cooperation, and I'm glad that James Cleverley is in Italy today to discuss migration international cooperation with, with the likes of France, with the likes of Italy, to stop those boats actually beginning sailing across the Channel. And that's how you can reduce the risk of people's lives and also reduce the risk of illegal immigration to this country. Mike, do you think that the government are taking um, a long-term approach to tackling migration? I think the rhetoric changed last night with Rishi Sunak. He was talking about balancing the, the global migration equation. He was using quite big global language on this. Even if Rwanda did work, and I don't think for a second that it would, do you think that the government are taking seriously issues such as climate change, global warming, the fact that people in far greater numbers will be looking to leave certain climates in order to be able to survive? Are the government actually using that long-term um, approach, or is it just short-termism to get another... I don't think they are at all. I mean, I, th I think their primary motivation is so they can say to a, cer to a certain cohort of voters, largely those that have said they're going to vote for reform, please come back to the Conservative Party. Look, we're really strong on, on immigration and what they're calling right. illegal immigration, which is actually just very legal asylum seeking. I don't think that will work, but I think that's their primary motivation. But no, but you're, you're absolutely right. There are increasing numbers of people migrating, leaving their place that's where they're at home, partly because of conflicts products of climate change, but we're not really talking about that as a nation. Just as, to be fair, we're not really talking about the wider implications of climate change for us as a nation or for the globe either. But this, this is going to continue. We need to think about why these people are migrating and what we can do about it, which in part means investment in the countries where these people come can from. Can I ask a stupid question? To ensure question? that they are safe and to ensure that they can adapt to climate change. Can I ask you a stupid question? Because I know it's going to be said, but I'm interested. Um, he's in, in Italy today, James Cleverly. Um, is Europe punishing us over migration because we left the European Union? Do you think no, it would not have been... at all. I'm just asking the question because a lot of people said to me, do you think it would have been easier for us to get those agreements or come up with a, with a different plan if we were still part of the European Union? Is I mean, that one... I mean, I'm just asking. I don't think easier. they are for a minute. I mean, they're having their own internal fights over immigration because, of course, we have migrants coming over the, cha over the channel. They have them coming over the Mediterranean and coming through Turkey and other routes. They've just passed an agreement in the EU which was meant to ensure that they would share because, of course, most migrants who hit the EU. I mean, they're here, they hit in Kent, there they hit in um, Italy and Greece. Italy and Greece have fairly enough been saying, this is not all of our problem, this needs to be shared across the whole EU. So they have just passed an agreement. But there are various ca caveats and get-outs where nations in Northern Europe can get out of taking their quota, which is just unfair and will probably need to be changed in the future. To give Rishi Sunak some credit, I think the Windsor framework that he renegotiated with uh, Ursula von der Leyen, I think, has put the UK on a better footing with Europe. And, Jeremy, to your point, is the EU punishing us? Not now, but they may well have done under Boris Johnson when it was slightly more, uh, what shall we say, aggressive rhetoric towards Europe, whereas Rishi Sunak, to his credit, has eased that relationship. So I don't think that's a problem. The Tory party is less popular when this trust was in, Leon. Well, indeed. I mean, I'm not saying that it's worked for the country. I'm not saying it's worked for their electoral chances, but you can't say Rishi Sunak has not been a steadier pair of hands than his two predecessors who came before him. He has no, been I able get, to... No, I get that, but I... I, I I will forever wonder how you can say I'm going to change everything and then employ Gavin Williamson within 11
seven minutes. I just think he could have swept clean mm. if that's what he wanted to do. Mm. And I think Rwanda could have been part of that. And, and if it is, as we all probably know it is, just politics to get the job, like Suella Bravman, I need the right, I'll make you home sexually, then I'll sell you down the river. And I'm no fan of hers, but that's basically what he did. Mm. Mm. That doesn't make you look very good. No, I mean, I think Rishi Sunak's political antenna is not fantastic. And no. I think that's part of his problem. Putting Suella Bravman in the role uh, was, was a clear mistake even before he'd even begun discussing whether she was the right person for the job. Clearly, she wasn't. But he has been able to deliver on that promise of being a more stable prime minister. And we are seeing that economically. We are trying to see this with what's happening with Rwanda, even though it isn't his policy. It's not going to be enough to win the next election, but it might be enough just to give the country a chance for whoever comes in next and is able to deliver uh, for our future.